There are many types of oral presentations, too many of course to begin here, but what I want to talk to you about is those kinds of oral presentations that are particular to the proposal process. Research tells us, of course, that there are pre-proposal stages during the solicitation, a procurement stage during consideration when the funding agency may come to visit you for a site visit, and of course a site visit at the contract stage after the award has been given. The following remarks are tailored for those proposals that would be during these stages and the oral presentations that would go with those. I wonder if we can go back to Walter Ong for a minute and look at his works on the psychodynamics of orality. Now, when we last went through these characteristics, we stressed the writing part of it. I wonder if we can go back now and use these heuristics to talk about the oral presentation. We said, for example, that writing is additive rather than subordinative, and that, that what we're looking for in writing is that particular kind of careful, methodical, a critical thinking statement, not something that's categorically divided, but, well, look at the slide in front of you. Certainly that's categorically divided. It's almost a series of speaking points. Um, it, it was often said in that Homeric poets, before the Homeric epics were written down, might have remembered what they were doing by having a stick, and certain parts of the stick would be carved out, and when, when the poet came to a certain part of the stick, he'd remember a certain part of the story, a certain trope of thought. Certainly, that device is what the technology of the computer, through the slides such as those you're looking at, gives us the idea of moving from one idea to another idea categorically. Certainly, the idea of clusters of ideas, aggregative rather than analytic. And in writing, we want to be more analytic. It's not that we don't in oral presentations, but we certainly have time to bring forward cluster of, uh, clusters of ideas and present those ideas. As well, uh, we said before that the oral world is redundant or copious. We certainly have time in oral presentations to describe, to elaborate in detail. Um, oral presentations can be, as it were, uh, very involved with elements that, that might have emotional appeals. So certainly while logos from classical rhetoric, logic would be brought in the written word, the <clears throat> spoken word allows us to experiment more with the idea of pathos or the idea of ethos. Again, oral presentations, there's an audience in front of you, it's not the isolated world of the written text, so it can be empathetic and participatory. We can try to evoke more things out of our audience by the voice than we can with a written word, and of course it is situational in a homeostatic present as well. What are some review criteria for oral presentations as they're involved in the proposal process? Well, I've been in a number of visits where I've seen oral presentations that had very little to do with the written text. Uh, that's a problem. Make sure during a pre-proposal, a proposal, a post-proposal review process that the oral presentation follows the general schemata, the general overview of the written presentation. It's also not safe to assume that the same people that would come to a site visitor from an oral presentation are the same people that read the document in the first place. So use the audience analysis techniques that we reviewed previously in the course for oral presentations as well. Most of us do use the computer and the idea of meticulously slides prepared with cohesive elements in mind are also important for oral presentations. Very often, collaborative presentations can be used in the proposal process, or, or, or your specialist, even if they're not going to speak on hand in case questions have to be asked. Is, is the person presenting the budget the most compelling speaker of the analysis of the budget? If not, make sure that you have someone who can get the ideas across and have the specialist there in the background for more technical questions. I think handouts are absolutely essential. I think that people like to take notes from slides during oral presentations. And I think that people very much like to see a presentation that's done in logical segmented sequence, especially following the segmented sequence of the written proposal itself. I think also during oral presentations, we frequently don't spend enough time anticipating the kind of questions that an audience might have for us. So anticipating those questions, perhaps brainstorming on those kind of questions with the group is also important. To remember then, 
oral briefing can be the most important part of the proposal process. I, I said in an earlier lecture that we learned most about those things that have gone bad. I think the large nightmare of proposals I ever had was a proposal that certainly was received and after a year of work we really didn't spend enough time for the site visitors. Um, while we didn't lose the proposal, the embarrassment left a lasting mark. Um, preparation for oral presentations is an important part of the proposal process. They can be used to persuade, they can be used to update, but most significantly they can be used to reify that the same people who wrote the proposal have as much conviction, have as much compelling nature toward the research to go ahead and plan a, a well-orchestrated oral presentation and to reify that the award has indeed indeed been made to the right people.